Hello, it's Judy Pate and today I'm showing you my 3D printer. Now, this is a TiVo Tarantula i3, but it has been heavily modified by myself. I picked up this um, 3D printer which was pre-owned, which would be the best way of describing it, from a uh, local seller who I found on eBay. I'd been looking for a 3D printer for quite some time and there's so many makes, models, price range, anything from £100 up to £100,000 you can probably spend even more. Obviously my budget was limited and I found a guy living locally called Adam if you're watching and he was selling this. He had built the machine but didn't really have the time to put into it to set it up and sort of keep it running and it was taking up room. He found he wasn't using it so he decided to sell it on. I went round, saw it, um, negotiated price and uh, took it home with me. Now the first thing I did when I got it home was to sort of basically not really dismantle but I took off all the electronics because I wanted them into this housing here which I will show you each part later on. So I wanted to do the electronics in this housing instead of mounted normally on the upright. Um, I run through the quick list of modifications as I can remember them. I've kind of been adding to the machine. The machine worked um, once it was all calibrated um, but then I wanted it to be better so I've added bits to it. So big changes is the carbon fibre bed, the glass, um, the spaces for the bearings, the support for the frame um, and strengthening. Obviously it's now rigid to a board. The light fittings, the big one is the X carriage with the um, ES3, E3D clone um, and belt tensioner and also I've got a uh, Moffett. MOSFET, MOSFET, MOSFET for the bed heater at the back. Um, power supply is still the original. I tried using ATX, but the one I had was a bit cheap and nasty and it didn't really work. So let's move around the different components and I'll sort of show you them in situ. So this is the control box. Now, this uses a basic project box which I modified. It still has the original TiVo Tarantula control board inside. And I've modified it with holes at the rear and a slot at the front for the uh, control box. Or the main control box. But I'll just show you the control box. It is basically the stock one. I do plan to upgrade this. Added some anti-slip feet. And also a knob from an old hi-fi unit which has an Allen key mounting right there. And basically that allows you to move this, find a control for settings. Obviously it still clicks in. The reset button is still accessible with a little jiggle, but that is a handy one. So if you see any old knobs laying around, always uh, pick up an old knob. <laughs> That's enough knob jokes. Okay, so this contains the board. It has two 80mm fans on the side, which is a bit overkill. I tested an old one I had with my PC and you could barely feel it on your hand. These ones um, do pump through quite a lot of air, but the board is done to remain chilly no matter what happens. Um, the power is linked from the 12 volt in just a basic loop of the power switch. Um, when you turn on the mains power, the um, cooler fan for the hot end is on all the time. So you can turn this off at the end of a print and then leave it sort of 10-15 minutes for the hot end to cool down slowly, not rapidly. You have one fan on pushing the air in and one fan pulling it out. I had both fans pushing in and planned to have the air exiting through the holes. But you could actually see the box slightly inflating, which wasn't ideal. This is mounted with a couple of L brackets just hidden off camera. So it's nice and solid, won't move around. 
and really does clean up electronics. It's fairly tidy in there, um, but getting to a more modern unit of a separate sort of control box instead of all the wires stuck behind. Right, let's move on. So moving on to the sort of main part of the machine. Um, I was printing on the original sort of TiVo sheet when I first got it, which is okay, but it's not the best. Once it heats up, it doesn't come, it changes ever so slightly. So this glass is literally from old picture frame. It's slightly too long, but and slightly not wide enough, but it's ideal because it how I have the um, cable for the heated bed. It sort of holds it off the end. The biggest change is this X carriage, which is a modular one. Um, it comes from the US. I'll put a link in the description. It's not that expensive. I think around about sort of less than $30. Made by a guy. Um, it contains all the mounting parts and it contains these sort of spoons, which free screws or bolts and you can lift the hot end out of the way leaving the X-carriage in situ. Um, this kit comes with one that can hold a standard J-top, the E3D clone. Um, also comes with one that can hold the standard hot end, which uses the four screws into the heatsink. He does a variant one that will hold the dual carriage um, stock and a dual, not dual carriage, dual hot end, and one that will hold dual um, E3D clones or the genuine article if you're feeling gen generous. As I mentioned before, I think I mentioned, this has got the carbon fiber heat pad on. Heat pad. Um, X, X plate, I guess. Um, going back, I have modified this with, let's just move the camera down slightly. I have modified this with the uh, linear rail on top. This eliminates the need for the uh, side rollers. And when I did that, I moved the um, base bars, I guess, from a flat position to a vertical position. This gives it much more rigidity, rigidity in the uh, angle. You can't do that. Um, if you still got the rollers because it would hit. I then changed around some of the mountains. Um, this is slightly stepped back because I noticed when the nozzle was coming across, it was coming across that slight angle down. So if it was drawn a square, it would draw it like that, then down, then back up thing. So it would be a trapezoid, I think that's called. So a small adjustment, it looks a little bit off, you'd, you'd think, oh, bring that down, but then to do placement. I'm not sure exactly why that is, maybe the X bar is not properly positioned by myself, but it works, it's not putting any strain on the machine, it's all good. So moving on, I have a, should be in shot, I have a um, belt tensioner which is good, it just takes off that last slack, especially on the uh, X-Rail. I have my little work light, so I can, uh, does help just take the shine off, especially if you're printing in a sort of a, a dark color, sort of PLA or material. This is a uh, frog I printed on the old hot end, I haven't had many hours with a new E3D. Still need to set up a cooling fan system. I saw a video from a guy, Italian guy, he does a air fish pump. Well, I'll try and put the link in the description to all the different things I'm mentioning. But the um, carbon fiber plaid comes from the um, makers, Maccas, in Italy. Metal from a guy in the America. All the other bits are from eBay and so forth. I did, let's raise the camera up so I don't have to jump cut. I did accidentally put the nozzle into the bed and crack the um, Z arm. I have got an aluminium one of these, which I need to fit. And temporary, I 
screwed this metal plate to it. So super glue and metal plate and that does offer it more rigidity again. And I did put angle piece behind. You got the angle bars here which just from a household goods section. And going down actually you can see I reinforced the um, acrylic with these angle L brackets. Got brackets on here and on the rear. All keeps it nice and tall. Oh, sorry, moving the camera around. Let's just pause it there and we will uh, spin the machine and uh, have a look at its rear. So now we are at the uh, rear of the year. Let's uh, just get the camera in better shot. Yes, I've labelled all my axes. And that's quite a handy tip once you're learning them. X, Y and Z. Just Y is the bed, Z is the uh, up and down and the X is across. But if you just think, oh God, I need to move a Y back. It's, while you're learning, it's quite a good idea just to label them. The uh, biggest change is the... Uh, MOSFET. Um, this is to control the heated bed. The heated bed draws quite a lot of current, um, needs to turn on and off. There's obviously a small one of these on the uh, main control board, but this literally just saves it. So uh, these have got the old white spaces underneath. I printed the um, cone spaces. I didn't really need one for here. But they're on the front machine as well. They are excellent for centralising the bearing. So the sort of cone comes out and the bearing can sit. The bed heating. This is a lead from an old kettle. So it's more than capable of carrying the current. Don't worry about the uh, loose cable. I need to clip that off. But that always gives me options in the future. These are very easy to wire up. You need power from a 12 volt source. If it's a 12 volt heated bed. So you have positive on the left here, negative on the right, and then your bed plugs in here, so positive and then negative, even though this side isn't marked, well it wasn't on my board. And then the control signal from, um, well basically where, this, where the bed used to plug into, you now take a lead and then plug that in. I just had some old power cable. Oh, fridge is starting up. Old power cable and looped it round. It's not the tidiest thing, but this really does a work treat. Um, this cable flex is ideal. Cheap as chips, you can pick it up. I think this is about 8mm variant. It loops and you can allow cables to in and out, pass through. Really does help tidy things up. And this is what I was saying about the glass is actually just too long but how I have it now um, it's almost like a sort of cable chain runs through let's just move I should be able to see the I've just put a bracket here which just supports the weight of the motor it just adds a little bit more of a strength there I've got an aluminium one for both the sort of top and the uh, X holder X holder, Z rod holder, which I need to fit, but at the moment it's it's working pretty good, so I'm not really too concerned about that. So the T Ray Tarantula is a great printer, but it's made to a cost. So if you get one, then you quickly find that things wear out, and you will want to. Uh, you probably be updating them in any rate. So the hot end for me, I had nothing. I had a few clogs, my mistake. So I took it apart. But every time I took the screws out, they wouldn't go back in tight. So where the uh, hot end meets the um, heat break, and that was coming loose, the little temperature cartridge, the heating cartridge would slide out quite a few problems so obviously you can't change you just can't get a e3d clone and or even real one should support them if you've got the money 
about 60 quid is quite a bit of money when I can get a fully built one for 12 and it does the same job it's a shame oh well maybe one day and uh, <laughs> but you can't change that without you can print a bracket but if you're to a point where you can't print anything and people say oh go to your local library my library doesn't have a 3d printer and they say go to your local um makerspace well the local makerspace to me is in south london and the cost of just getting down there impossible to drive cost of getting down there by public transport coming back and paying the subs and joining and then printing it and so forth is about the same as buying or even buying this actually so unfortunately the dream of maker space is cheap where you can go along and knock out what you want for next to nothing is not really possible where i live which is in north london so basically there you go and that's my only basically well that's my second one <laughs> um this is my tiro tarantula i hope you enjoyed the walk around a little bit different i'm going to use this for printing uh typewriter bits and just other project ideas i have always wanted one fascinating technology moved on leaps and bounds so thank you for watching hope you like this take care goodbye